Welcome to chapter 19 and assembly configurations and display states. Assembly configurations enable you to do a lot of things. One of the things that you can configure is you can configure the configuration of a part that's used. Let's demonstrate that by coming over to the configurations tab for the assembly and I'm going to add a configuration this configuration will be called uh, angle 2 and uh, you know maybe you'll spell it right when you do it and what I want to do in this configuration is change the configuration of the part so I'll right click on the part go to configure component in the default configuration of the assembly I'm going to use the default configuration of the part but in angle 2 configuration of the assembly I'm going to use angle 2 configuration of the part. So I'll say OK. Now when we switch back and forth between the two configurations in the assembly, we get two different configurations of the part. Another thing that you can do with configurations in assemblies is suppress or unsuppress mates. So let's create a new mate where uh, our top lane and the plane Let's say the top face a mate between these, and uh, we'll make an angle mate. The angle that it is will be just fine, and we'll say OK. All right, so now it's fully defined. If we try to grab it and move it, it won't move. Let's make a new assembly configuration called motion, and in this configuration, We'll go back and take that angle mate and suppress it. So this allows us to uh, to put the fork into motion the way it would be bouncing over a rock or something. And uh, if we switch back to, say, the angle 2 configuration, what we want to do is configure the feature so that in the motion, this mate is suppressed but everywhere else the mate is not suppressed so we'll say okay on that come over to the motion configuration move the fork it's bouncing over a rock or something okay let's uh, change to angle two and now this should be rigid and fully defined all right so that's another use of configurations let's uh, let's add another Add a configuration. We'll call this one angle three. And in angle three, what we're going to do is change the value of this angle mate. So this angle mate is at 10 here. Let's make it 15. But as we change it, we're going to say for this configuration only. We've got angle 3 and angle 2, which give us different initial positions of this fork, and then the motion configuration, which enables us to, to move it. We could have another configuration where we swapped out the fork with a different model fork. Uh, we've already shown that with change configuration. You can suppress parts. You can use different part configurations. You can suppress mates. You can use different values for mates. You can drive assembly feature dimensions, uh, turn assembly features on and off. There's a lot of things that you can do with configurations in assemblies. Now, there's something else I want to show, which is display states. Display states allow you to have something that's comparable to configurations, but for visual type data. In the display states, I can control various display settings. So if I go back to the previous display state, we have a shaded stem. And if I go to my new display state, it's wireframe. That's one of the type of things that you can do. You can also hide components. It's much more efficient to hide components using display states than it is using configurations. So if you're just going to turn parts on and off visually, then display states is the way to go. 
if you're going to actually suppress parts and say replace it with another part then you go, you're going to need to use configurations for that sort of thing there's something else about display states that we need to talk about display states can be linked to configurations so that these a certain display state is only available in a given configuration or if you have this switch turned off the display states can apply to the model regardless of which configuration it's in. You've also got a setting here to hide new components when inactive. What this means is that you, if you add a new component to the assembly and this display state is inactive, what are you going to do? Or how is that new component treated by this display state? If you have this checked, then any new component you put in the assembly will be hidden in this display state even if it's inactive when the change is made and of course the opposite if that option is unchecked. You can also apply that change to all display states, specified display states, or only this display state. So there are a lot of options available to you between configurations and display states and there are special considerations that you have to take into account when you're working with configurations. A lot of the things that we could say about part configurations, we could also say about assembly configurations. And in the next chapter, when we start talking about in-context relations and how that relates to configurations, this all gets very convoluted and complex. So pay attention read the book carefully, work through your examples. I would encourage you to try to break the models and try to break the software to, to just understand exactly where the limits of this functionality lie. So best of luck to you and I hope you learn a lot about configurations and display states.